Let's create a Teams for that. How many times have you heard that in the past few years? Several hundred, I would reckon. Now that has a consequence. Your left-hand side Teams navigation bar is starting to get full up with all of those teams that you have no idea why you're a member of. And that turns it into the digital version of Mount Everest. You start out full of hope to find that all important team as you scroll down, only to give up halfway because you can't find the summit. Oh, okay, it's not that bad, right? But it can feel like that at times when you're scrolling through your teams list. So that also brings up a question. Is there another way than creating a team? And yes, you can use Microsoft Teams group chat. And that offers capability similar to other apps like Facebook Messenger and also WhatsApp. That means you can start a group chat with your colleagues really easily, share conversations, files, and more without creating that team. So let's dive into Microsoft Teams and look into how you can get the most from group chat without needing to create that Microsoft team. So here I am inside of the Microsoft Teams desktop app and to access group chat, well, all we need to do is go to the chat tab on the left-hand side of the Microsoft Teams app. And once you're in here, you're gonna see all of your existing chats, but we need to work out how we're gonna start our first group chat message. And all we need to do is click on the new message icon at the top of the Teams chat area. That looks like a square with a small line. Actually, I think it's supposed to be a pencil and a piece of paper, but who knows? When you click into this, you'll now see the to field appears. And it's where most people get stuck. They only input one person's name. For example, I could put Miriam in here. We can actually see it picks up the past conversation I've had with Miriam as a one-to-one -one chat. But instead, we can add in additional people. I'll left click into here again, and I'll also add in Megan, and also Diego as well. As you can see, that conversation thread is now blank. I haven't had a conversation with these parties before and I've added these three people into this group chat message. And as quick as that, we now are ready to send our first message. All we need to do is go to the bottom of the type of message and you'll see that it resolves their names at the top. In other words, the group chat has started as a draft. We're gonna go ahead and just type a short message to these three people. And once we've done that, we can see at the top that I've added these people into a chat and all three of these individuals will now receive the message I've sent. They can also reply using the exact capability in Microsoft Teams chat. But equally, you're probably thinking, that's great, but these members can change. So how can we add and remove other people? Well, in the top right, you'll see a plus icon with a number of people in the chat next to it. Left click into it and you can see the individuals available in this chat. And we're only interested right now in adding someone. So we're gonna click on add people and we can type in the person's name that we'd like to bring in. In this case, I'm gonna search my colleague Nestor. And you can also see that when we try and add someone in, we have a choice. And this is, what should that person see? And we don't get this flexibility when we use Microsoft Teams as a vehicle to have our conversations in channels. But in group chat, we certainly do. We can decide how long the chat history should be visible for. Or alternatively, we cannot include any history or all history should we prefer. But I'm gonna go ahead and include all chat history so Nestor could pick up on that short message or even previous messages, assuming this thread has gone on for quite a while. Once you're ready, click on add. Nestor will now be added in exactly the same way for a Microsoft Teams chat and all members in the chat will also see that my account has added Nestor into our group conversation. But of course, people go and people leave organizations, maybe change team, and your chat also needs to evolve with that. Maybe you need to remove someone from our conversation. But all we need to do is hover over one of these individuals and we can much again remove Nestor. Click on the remove button here and you'll be prompted that they will remove Nestor from the chat, but importantly, all the chat history will still be available to Nestor. And that is what happens inside of Teams. We can go ahead and then click on remove. That now will remove Nestor from the chat. It will appear on the left hand side, allowing them to access previous chat history, but no new messages can be sent or received inside of your group chat. But there is also something to consider. 
Now, as you've been part of more conversations, renaming conversations can help pick up the thread later on. You'll find many of these single and group conversations appearing on the left, and you'll have to try and guess which one relates to what activity. Now, to rename a group chat, it's pretty straightforward to do. Go to the top and select the pencil icon next to the individual's names, and you can give this group conversation a new name, more relevant to the topic you're going to discuss. So I'm going to go ahead and add in something to our group name. With that done, click on save. And as we can now see, the group name has been updated. But just to note that other people inside of that group will also see that name change. So that's not a personal name change that only you can see. Others can see it too. So that's a good thing to note before you change it something that may not be so appropriate. So it felt like a great time to take a short break. And within that, let's also explain what we do in case you need any help in the future because your 365 coach is focused on you getting the most out of Microsoft 365. Whether you, your team or business need consultancy or training or coaching on Microsoft 365 technologies, we can certainly help. To find out more about what we do, head to the link below. You can even contact us. Not only that, on our site, there is a free Microsoft 365 ebook that you can download and access to give you even greater ways to work in Microsoft 365. So other than that, now we've taken that breath, let's head back into Teams. So you're probably thinking that's fantastic, but what happens if you already have a team and you wanna to talk to those individuals through chat? Well, you can also do that through group conversations. Instead of naming those people individually, let's go ahead and open a new message. And in here at the top, you can see we input an email, a name, group, or tag. Now by group, we also reference their Microsoft Teams. So if I have a team pre-created with members in it, I can go ahead and search for that name in the top bar. Then once I found this one here for business development, I can also see the group email address. And when I left click into this, you'll see it automatically expands all of those people inside of that team. Once again, the same logic applies. I can go ahead, go down to the bottom and type hi all to start the conversation with effectively these 16 people. Clicking on send starts that conversation. Now, as you can see, it doesn't sync the group membership. It doesn't call itself business development. I once again would need to go to the top to rename this chat, but equally, if you need to add or remove others, you can do this specifically in this group chat and it is not synchronized into your Microsoft team. So yes, you do need to keep up with membership in your group chat. But this is a great way to have conversations with one of your teams without inputting 16 people's names individually to get started quickly. So you're not limited to just sharing conversations inside a group chat. You can even share files. So there's a PDF file around some sales material I'd like to share with my colleagues through group chat. And it's actually stored in my OneDrive or equally, it could be on my local computer. What I need to do is go to the bottom and click on the pay-per-click attach icon, select attach cloud files, and I can now browse through all of my locations, be it inside of Teams or SharePoint through the quick access dialog or inside of my OneDrive. Now I have a contract in my documents folder for the international marketing campaign. Click ahead and click on attach. Now it's important to note that at the bottom, you can see the marketing campaign has also been shown in the chat box. But in small print, it also says anyone with a link can edit. This is because it uses sharing links and creates a link from your OneDrive and uploads it to the chat. And sometimes those sharing links can be a little bit too open in the security. If you want to change this, you can actually click into the small drop down and your sharing dialog will appear. And I can select this to only share with people in this chat, meaning someone can't take that link and share it with others outside of my chat. I can also review the access and make this read only rather than to allow changes and even block download so it only appears through the browser. With that done, we're gonna go ahead and click apply. We can now see the visible difference that people in this chat are the only people that can see this file. Now equally, this is important to note because I've changed it to the people in this chat, if people join later, you need to update the security of that file. It is only giving access to the people who are already inside of this chat via that link. 
So I'm gonna go ahead, add a short message, and then send this into the chat. Now the file's in the chat, well, how can we work with it? Well, left click into the file, and in Microsoft Teams, we can preview the content. And if that was a Word or an Office file, we can also preview and make edits through the Teams app. If you now close out of this file and click in the free dot menu, you'll also see you have the ability to download this to your local machine, to then share it with others, or copy the link, assuming people had access elsewhere, you could also share it with others, assuming the sharing link provides access. Now, if you wanna share additional resources inside of your chat, you can also go and click on the plus button at the top of the chat and add in other apps and services from other areas. That might be a Word document, that could be a website, but you can add any of these tabs, including third-party apps to have quick access in the exact same way that we do inside the Microsoft Teams channels, giving you that flexibility, but again, delivering it all through group chat capabilities. But also your group chat can support Microsoft Loop, allowing content to be also shared in this chat and edited in real time inside of your group chat. To do that, click on the loop icon at the bottom and you can choose a loop component you'd like to share. Now I have a paragraph of text upcoming for a sales conference I want to share with the management team. So I can go ahead and then paste it into here and also give it a title. Now once I have my loop component, I can once again change the security of that component by clicking into this dropdown. But equally, I'm fine that this could be seen organizational wide. There's nothing confidential in here. I could go ahead and then click on send. And then in this component, as we can see, we can actually click into it and make live changes to that content that will be seen by everyone else in this group chat. So that's a great way to collaborate around a component in loop that can dynamically change and also have people feed into it without a need to send different versions or different files back and forth over email. It is also possible in group chat to tag people. So in here, I have a number of members on my chat. And if I put the at symbol in the chat box, we can see I can tag one of those individuals. Here, I can put at Megan, and I can ask Megan to pick up something in the above text. That will mean that Megan gets a notification through Teams that she's been tagged and then to pick up this on a chat message. But equally, we can even tag people outside of the group chat. Once again, click on the at character. This time, you can see add someone to the chat at the bottom. Left click into that, and we can now type in someone's name. Now I've input Patty, who's not a member of our chat. And once again, I'm prompted to show how much history should be shown to Patty. So I'm now gonna not include any history and then click on add. Now Patty has been added. Once again, I can go ahead and tag Patty and then ask a question. And that is now bringing Patty into our group chat. So simply tagging someone, you can bring them into your group chat to also collaborate further. And as we expand our files and share them inside of this chat, it can become difficult to get back to them easily. And there is a simple way to go back to your existing files shared inside of your group chat. Click on the files tab at the top and you'll see a list of all of the files shared inside of that chat. And you can go ahead and click into them, have quick access to any of those files. A simple way to get back to files shared inside of that chat, but taking all that stress away from finding them. Now, if you'd like to also communicate with your team in a different way, maybe on our management team, we need a quick call to discuss that content I shared earlier. Well, does that mean that I have to go into Outlook and schedule a meeting? No, I can just go up to the call or video call icon, select audio or video call, and it will connect with a call and call those individuals in real time. They allow us to have that conversation nice and easy and take away the need to run a Teams meeting and as you expand your conversations, either group chat or one-to-one -one chats, you're also gonna manage them on the left-hand side. So at any point in these conversations, you can click on the free dot menu, and you can also now mark it to hide or mute the chat. If you're getting a lot of notifications with chats that you really don't need to be a member of, but wanna occasionally step in, you can mute the chat. No more notifications will be shared with you through Microsoft Teams. Equally, if you'd like to go in and hide it, you can also hide it entirely from that chat list. And also if you want to leave chats because they're no longer relevant to your needs, well, the free dot menu once again in the chat and then select leave. 
and you'll be able to leave the conversation. Now, people are aware when you've left, they'll be marked on the chat thread, and you'll still have access to all of that chat history. So you can go ahead and leave as and when you would prefer inside of these group chats. So there you have it, group chat in Microsoft Teams, a super easy way for you and your colleagues to come together and collaborate on your next piece of work without creating a Microsoft team. Now we hope you liked this video, and if you did, please do hit that like button. And don't forget to follow this channel to find more productivity tips to turn you into a productivity superstar. Otherwise, I'll be seeing you on the next one.